Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our IPM with Java series, today we are going to see how we can set up some more test cases with different scenarios. So if you would have observed in our previous session, we have simply taken uh, one single sort by method. Like if I go inside this, you can see there is a sort by option and name ascending, right? Like out of these options, we have only taken this option, this one option, and then we verified whether the item price is this much and also the product name is Sauce Labs backpack or not. So this is for one scenario, right? But we have four different sorting mechanisms are there like name ascending, descending, price ascending and price descending. Now how do we test it? So probably what I need to do, I need to write four different methods to select this particular method and then here I need to keep like four different sets of price and name comparison, right? Or the assertions. Now that is uh, time consuming and also which increases your maintenance also, right? So what we can do instead of keeping this as a hard coded right we can use some kind of external tests test data source like excel sheet or json format so for different assertion types the name and price will be different and based on that dynamically we can compare it here so for that actually i have created an excel sheet now this is what the excel sheet looks like you can see i've created a broad sort as my excel sheet uh, sheet name and here you can see i have captured three different columns one is item item is not Thing but the product name and then the price for each of the items and then these are actually like you can see four different product names are coming now based on the selection right like if you are taking the name uh, ascending order this would be your first item name descending this would be your first item and this would be your first item price right now that is what actually we here we are comparing so now with one set of code base that I'm I'm going to write it where I can fit all these four scenarios. Now in future, let's say that you have two more assertion scheme or the sort by mechanism scheme. Now you can simply add the two sort methods and then the name and price of that. And then you can simply use the same logic which will also work for those newly added two sort functionalities as well. So this particular scenario, I'm going to showcase the usage of Excel sheet, how how you can create the excel sheet utility and then utilize that into your framework now we have already seen how to utilize the excel sheet right like if you go to my previous sessions let me open my previous repos now if you see this particular session here right on the selenium topics we have looked into the excel reader how to create the utility method now if i go inside i can go quickly what exactly this particular uh, utility method looks like now here you can see there is a method we have created which is a set excel file now this set excel file normally will have the excel path and the sheet name right and then what it does is that it first sets up all the workbook sh the cell object and everything and after that it is capturing all the columns and keeping it inside a columns uh, map actually here now here you can see get cell data now this basically takes the row number and column number and uses the uses the uh, excel apache pui logic to capture the data into the string format here we are just uh, generalizing that and then if you go below here get cell data the same method only here we are using method overloading concept instead of the row name and row number and column number right you can even give the column name as well that is why we have created this columns uh, map actually and then after that we have created one uh, another method actually where you can get the number of rows get the number of columns and after that we have created another utility method which will capture the specific cell data and also convert that into a 2d two-dimensional array so two-dimensional arrays are nothing but like uh, multiple rows are having multiple columns the same layout as your excel sheet looks like so that it would be easy to capture those details into a uh, two-dimensional object array and if we can fetch the data based on the row index and column index i will be keeping that particular excel sheet session into the description below you can watch that particular session i'm not going 
into details of this implementation. Our idea is to utilize this Excel utility in our framework actually there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll take this particular entire like content and I will be putting it into a new Excel reader class. And let's say that under this base package, I will be creating a new class here and I will say Excel reader. You can even keep it inside a particular package as well. Like you can also create a new package under this as a reader and under that you can put it as well. Now here, let me copy paste that content, whatever I've taken and this would be base. And then let me just change a little bit. Let's see if Apache PY is added into this or not. Okay, you can see Apache PY is not added into our Appium framework. So let's quickly add that as well. And let me load the particular dependency or install the dependency. And then load the Maven now. Reload the project and then let's go to this and here you can see all the errors are gone so i have kept that particular utility here actually now let's utilize this excel reader to keep the data uh, or to have that testing now for that what i am going to do i'll copy that excel sheet as well into this particular project so i'm going right click on this project open in finder and then under this let me copy paste that particular excel file and now let me rename this into the test data only okay fine then so now what i'm going to do i will be taking into the product test let's come back here and then here i'm writing some logic now for this i have to do little bit change into this so for that actually let me comment these details and later we will copy paste this logic to have for all other options fine now let me go back to here and here what i'm going to do i'll write some option here so i will first take that string options okay that sort by options i need to send it from this particular test actually here so instead of doing that i'll do like this and i will take that excel sheet column data into this i will be passing here so come back here again and here let me write the switch statement actually to have all these options there let me just comment these things and here i'm going to put this and here i can simply say switch option probably i can say sort option okay and let me copy this and here you put it okay now here you click on that sort by option after that based on whatever the data that you are passing this switch statement will be working actually as simple as that here you can see wait and click sort by option wait and click name ascending right instead of this i am keeping four different conditions that's all i am doing here now let's come back to here read that excel sheet actually so for that i will create one excel reader object and equal to new excel reader now here i'm going to send some value actually so here what i'm going to do excel reader dot set excel file and here i need to provide the path actually now here i will say test data dot xlsx and the sheet name now the sheet name is that prod short okay that's all actually you which you need to do now for this actually i will go here and let's see what else error is coming okay so after that what i'm going to do i'll take one object here and this object will be having two dimensional array and equal to here i will take excel reader dot two to d array that's all actually which you need to do now see when you take this right what would be the columns here now i need to send the option now where is that option that option is on the third column right like if you remember name price and then we have the 
short option right so it means that this is the third column now it means that i will take the obj see now how will i take there are four to five rows which we have seen right how will i take so for that i need to take an for loop actually so i will be keeping int equal to zero and then here i will say i less than and i will say object dot length so whatever the length of that particular two dimensional array and then you loop it now while looping it for each loop you need to perform this operation now here like row row is nothing but i right and what is the column that i need to send as part of that so 0 1 2 right so it means that the index is 2 now because this is object and this sort by need a string so i will say two string that's all actually which you need to do so now passing the sort option actually here sort option fine now after that i will simply take this particular two assertions and i will be copy pasting now here instead of this what i'm going to do i'll take object and then which row i row and then column is uh, price is on my second column right it means that first index now the same thing i'll take instead of a hard-coded name right I will take this and then I will put the first column. First column is nothing but zeroth column. So like that actually you will be keeping it. Now because this is a string right assert equals I will have to do two string and here also I will be taking two string because this particular product name is coming as string and also price wise also we have taken it as a string like if you see that see this is get product price what it is returning a string right so that is how i have kept it now you can see the same three lines of code but we just taken an excel sheet data reading and keeping the details now we are able to use the same three lines of code and validating all the options of the short actually there now this is what we have to approach actually whenever there is an excel sheet is coming some people might say that you know how can you write the logic here now if you see these are not the business logics okay so these are the positive and negative scenarios your testing logics so testing logics i would suggest to keep it here or maybe prepare an utility method which will give all this excel reader and object but then your actual business logic i have kept it inside the page object model so business logics we should not be keeping into the test case but the uh, test logic you can keep it here okay so that is all actually which i was trying to explain now let's try to see that if this particular way of approach is really working fine or not so let me open my simulator and then run this particular test case okay so now the simulator is ready and the app is already installed i think i have all the configurations as it is i have just created a new excel reader class and then did couple of changes to my page object and to the test case or the like page object class actually now let me run this particular test actually so come back here and run okay so it seems like i need to add couple of other dependencies here actually along with poi i need to install the poi xxml and the commons io as well right so let me just take that real quick come back here and then poi dot x x o m l uh, what is that uh, so here it is like you can see o o x m l so let me take that here and below to this let me do that and also let me write the commons io as well commons io and then come back here and then take the latest and then just copy paste this okay and now save it and then refresh or load the maven changes and it should now load that and sometimes it may not be loading so right click on this project to go to maven and you can reload this project as well and now everything is set up now let's go to this and run the same test again 
okay so it will be keep on choosing one by one and verifying the first item from the list okay i think there is some validation issue that it got let's see that what is the issue there okay so it is verifying seven dot uh, actually seven dot nine zero dollar but actually it is coming as seven dot nine nine it seems like in the excel sheet we have given wrong data that's why it is failing now this is one of the issue also that uh, you can also verify now here one thing that you can verify though as we have given the wrong data uh, so actually it found out the issue actually here now you can see on the third option when it was testing right it was coming it it actually got the uh, assertion error and it failed the test case but probably the fourth option would be working fine so in that case which we didn't which we need not to fail that at that instance so for this what we are going to do when you are dealing with multiple assertion in your uh, what you call framework right or in your test case i would suggest always to go for this soft assertion uh, test ng soft assertion you might be knowing right so i will say soft assert equal to new soft asset and now i will be taking this into all these asserts now what exactly this does if any error is coming it will capture that error but it won't fail the test case actually there at the end i will say soft assert dot assert all that's all okay now let me go back to this excel sheet and okay let's go with first the error itself only that i'm expecting a failure into the third option it should continue all the and complete the entire set actually so let's try that option first okay so it finished the validation now let's try to see the total result here and you can see that out of the four test cases right one got failed here because it is expecting that the amount should be 7.90 but it is getting 7.99 from the application so 7.90 was actually wrongly mentioned in the excel sheet actually so that is why your test case executed as it is and you can see there is no specific errors except this one now this is one of the benefit when you use the soft assertion instead of the hard assertion assertion now let's go back into this excel sheet and rectify that issue and then it should completely pass our test case and here you can see this is 7.90 instead of that it should be 7.99 let me save that content and come back to this test and execute it so that it should completely pass the test case set okay so now let's go back here and you can see the complete set got passed there is no issue nothing is there and you can see like everything is all good actually here okay you can see total set is passed so that is how you can use an excel sheet and keep the data it is not just limited to this particular scenario you can do a lot of different testing like you can capture all these details like all these six items item name and price into an excel sheet and you can grab all these details from this list and then you can validate against your excel sheet data as well so i hope this particular session is helpful to understand how you can utilize the excel sheet and fit it with your automation framework by using different utility methods so that it is easy to maintain and also you can have several test data into your framework so that was pretty much it for this session stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel we will be seeing some more interesting topics in our upcoming sessions Thank you for watching.